All right, guys, this is the brand new released Gin X. I've been trying this out for a few days now and I've got the top variation model. It comes in three different variations. This one at the time of the video is 1,090 pounds. This is the world's cheapest premium hybrid e-bike. And I say premium because it has a lot of features and specifications whereby in any other bike that would cost over 1400 pounds and i'll cover that in a second and i say hybrid because not only is it great for commuting on city roads but you can take it off-road to mountainous areas to hills grass and all different types of terrains let's get into it Okay, let's just talk about the top three variations. This one, like I mentioned, is top tier because you get this double-sided pannier bag that sits right on top of the rear rack that you can also maybe sit your child on or put any other groceries and backpacks or anything like that. Sports up to like 50 kilograms of weight, which I think is great. But you can also get the cheaper model if you want to remove either the bag and if also you wanted to remove the rear rack as well to save a little bit more cost. Okay, so why is this a premium e-bike? Take a look at the screenshot that I'm showing you on the video now and pause the video if you'd like to read more details about it or click on the link in the description if you wanted to find out more detailed specifications about the e-bike. But now I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of these features in more detail. Okay, starting off, let's talk about these tires that make it suitable for all terrains. These are 27 and a half inch tires and they are 2.1 inch thick. So they would be considered a little bit more like fat tires, which allow it to easily be rideable off-road in hilly areas maybe with a lot of pebble stones and just more hard and rough surfaces okay so i just want to talk about this derailleur this is the shimano altus typically a lot of bikes in this range use the shimano tourney and the tourney is usually found in like budget e-bikes where you can use the e-bike for everyday normal rides but on the other hand the altus derailleur provides greater help when you are using this bike for off-road riding and you'll really notice the difference when you start shifting gears you'll feel that it's much more smoother when you're using the Altus. And plus, I would say the Altus requires relatively less maintenance than the Tourney over many, many years. You also have a KMC rust-free train, which is going to be very important, especially if you're gonna keep this bike very long term. Along the front, you have pretty powerful suspensions, which again, is very important, especially if you are going to take this off-road and drive through rough surfaces. The bike itself has hydraulic brakes and this is key for making this a premium e-bike because most of the bikes in this price range you're not going to get any hydraulic brakes on them and traditionally you'll just have mechanical brakes so I think that is a big win with the Gen X. Okay let's turn on the bike you hold down the mode button here on the left and this is a large digital display which is great you've got your miles per hour there at the top for your top speed the bike at the moment is unlocked so this will go roughly around 30 miles per hour, maybe slightly more. And that's with the full electric plus pedal assistance mode. You've got the battery level there, so I've charged it fully with 100%, and we'll talk about the battery in a second. Pedal assist, you've got five different modes on here, so you press the arrow buttons, one, two, three, four, and five. If you're in the middle of a ride and you wanted to maybe go back to manual, then you can just go to zero, and this will stop you from using any pedal assistance. And then you've got the odometer at the bottom to tell you how much mileage you've actually ridden on the bike itself. Now, what you guys can't see is just underneath the digital display, there is a USB port. So you can actually charge your phone whilst you're riding and mount that onto your handlebar. So I think that's a great feature to have. And then you have the throttle here. So you can use your left thumb and you press that down and then you can go either full electric or pedal assistance and really pick up the speed as well. So I think that's great. And it's probably in the most comfortable position for me. Okay, so just to showcase you guys how fast this actually goes, I'm on at pedal assist level one, so I'm just gonna tilt it on the kickstand, pressing the throttle. Let's move it up to pedal assist two. Three. Four. And lastly, number five. So this will give you a max speed of around 32 miles per hour unlocked, which this one is. And now let me show you by pressing the hydraulic brakes how it quickly stops. Instant. Now that's one of the key things of having hydraulic brakes rather than mechanical brakes. For me personally, if you are going to be riding at high speeds, 
this is going to be very important if you wanted to stop all of a sudden for your safety. So that is a big win for me. So in terms of the build of the bike, it is made of pure aluminium alloy. It weighs 19 kilograms, which is actually a little bit lighter than some of the e-bikes I've reviewed in the past. It's pretty easy for me to pick up. So if you wanted to maybe take off the front wheel and to store this in your car, it's very easy to do that. And sometimes you may not need an additional person to help you. One thing I also wanted to mention from a security point of view is the battery on the e-bike is in the lower frame here. But from an external perspective, when you're first looking at the bike, you can't tell there's a battery in here because it's actually hidden inside, slotted in from the bottom. So you'd have to put your bike on the ground to put the battery in. A lot of the e-bikes out there, the battery is removable from outside and it's very visible and you see like the key lock and everything like that. And it could also be a target, for example, for bike thieves that maybe want to steal your battery if you do leave it in there and you're away from your bike. So I'm going to show you now where the battery is located and how to charge it up and how to lock it in place. And I just think that's really important when you do have an e-bike nowadays is to keep it hidden as much as possible so that from a distance, it doesn't even look like an e-bike. So first you lean it down and there you can see the battery key, the power and the fuse switch is just there at the bottom and the entire thing gets removed from here. Now this is a 615 watt hour battery which has 48 volts and it will give you a range of over 75 miles of riding. I think that's great and there's no other e-bike especially in this price range that can allow the battery to be this large and this much capacity. A lot of the e-bikes around the £1,000 price mark would probably give you a 40 mile range and would probably have 350 watt hour battery capacity. So 615 watt hour battery capacity on the Gin X for me is personally one of the best that I've seen and one of the highest. So that's something I really can't fault. So the power is on but you can also switch the power off and having a manual switch like that is quite important. To take the battery out you unlock it with the key. And there we go, that is the very large battery pack. This is where you can charge it. So I have the 48 volt charger, which you put that in there and you're ready to charge it up. And it takes about maybe four hours to fully charge it, which is actually a really good amount of time. And then here you have the fuse switch. This is very important from a safety point of view, because if you have too much current coming into the battery when you're charging, or maybe you're using the wrong type of charger, or your socket doesn't give you the right voltage output, then this prevents it from sparking or causing any problems with the battery. And you know, it will really prevent any fires from happening. So the ideal height for riding this bike is between five foot four and six foot four, but the seat is also adjustable. So you can just unclip, rotate, elevate the seat a little bit higher and lock it back in place. The saddle itself is the standard version, which is where some of the cost savings come from. So this one might get a little bit uncomfortable if you ride it for a very, very long time, but they also sell a more premium padded saddle on their website. So do check out the Jin e-bikes website in the link down below, and you can buy one. Even if it's not from them, you can buy one from anywhere else. It's very universal and you can swap it out and they sell a whole load of accessories as well. This also has a light that comes on at the front here. It's pretty bright. You just hold down the up arrow once the bike is on and it really illuminates the road in front of you. So that's quite important to have. And at the back, you only have the red reflector light, which is not powered by any battery or anything like that. So there's one other feature that I really wanted to mention is the automatic throttle for walking. Essentially, it's like a walk mode. If, for example, you really want to push your bike up a very steep incline or onto a hill and you're struggling a little bit, once the bike is on, all you have to do is hold down the down arrow and it will kickstart with an automatic throttle. You have to keep it pressed down for it to give you the assistance. And once you let go, then it will stop giving you that extra assistance. So I'm going to show you case an example in my garden because I don't have any steep incline around me. I'm just going to do a little circle. But once I hold down the down button on the unit just on the left, it will start to push itself. You'll get an icon on the screen with a little walking person on there. And let's see how that performs. So close the kickstand, hold it down. It's pushing itself. I'm not giving any movement. Once you let go, it just comes to a stop. I think that's very useful as well. So if you do live in maybe mountainous or hilly areas and you 
don't have the ability to maybe ride up that hill or maybe you're out of battery then this is going to be very important to just give you that extra boost so now there's nothing left to do except to take it out for a ride and give you guys a performance review okay so having ridden this on the roads i felt like it was very comfortable i felt very secure and very steady personally the ride was super smooth and because of the thicker tires i felt like i was more comfortable riding over little bumps maybe a few potholes here and there and it wouldn't cause any problems if i wanted to jump onto a curb which didn't have any drop curb and i felt very comfortable doing that as well with the weight of the bike it makes it a lot more smoother as well because it is lighter and it feels like you're gliding a little bit more easily. I feel like the heavier the bike, the harder it is to do those sudden twists and turns whenever you need to. When the bike is a little bit more lighter, then it's much more easier to really you know, shift your direction and movement according to your ride. When I was riding it off-road, I was going through these bike trails in the country park and there were very different types of surfaces and terrains. There were very rough ones, there were smooth ones, there was bumpy ones, rocky ones, and this handled it very well. I was able to really use the pedal assist to get through the more rougher surfaces. If I needed to use the throttle, I could have used it. And, and from a safety point of view, I do try to avoid using the throttle when it is in rougher areas, just in case you do happen to fall, then it would be a rougher landing and you don't want to have that type of landing when you are going at quite high speeds. But having said that, with the suspension, I think it's really handled it well. I was able to shift gears very easily and to compensate for the different types of surfaces and the level of difficulty I would have to pedal. Having a pannier bag on the rear rack, which is full of my equipment, and I've got my camera equipment, my recording equipment, I felt like I was quite secure because it is tied down. It has cable straps that attach to the rack. I didn't feel like it would interfere into the wheel. It doesn't touch it in any way. And I felt like it's not going to fly off or cause any problems. So that again is also quite an important thing when you do keep very valuable items in that rear bag. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Guys, good, this good. is Rahul. He is one of the co-founders of Jin e-bikes. And I brought him along with me today to ask him a few questions. So Rahul, I just wanted to find out a little bit more about the cycle scheme yeah. that you use for Jin e-bikes. Yeah, so we are registered with Cycle Scheme and Bike to Work and a couple of more providers. So we want every employer and employee mm -hmm. uh, to be facilitated in such a way that uh, affording an electric bike becomes a lot easier for yeah. them. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And can you tell me a little bit more about the free test ride that you offer with these? Yeah, um, one thing which we, uh, we brainstormed around this a lot and we wanted to make sure that make sure that if someone is buying an electric bike, which costs them like thousand pounds or even more, they are like comfortably um, in a position that th they exactly know that the frame structure, the bike quality and everything is perfect for them. That's so awesome. that once they have bought it, there should not be any issue, you know? Yeah, so, and it's just yeah. like buying a car, right? You always yeah. do a test ride Absolutely. beforehand. Yeah. And my final question is, how is this bike so premium at just around the 1,000 price mark? I'm quite well, surprised. Well, um, the short answer is we are, we are, I mean, not focused as a company over the profits. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing is we are basically um, cutting down our profits and maintaining premium features. So um, what's happening is we are able to bring down the entire, even though the cost of production remains same, the cost of selling goes down substantially lower because we have cut down our margins substantially. So, yeah. Awesome, perfect. Well, I appreciate that. And hopefully that helps you guys understand a little bit more about useful information if you are making a decision to buy an e-bike. Yeah, Rahul, thank sure. you very much for that. Thanks, thanks, thanks very much. Bye-bye. So hopefully you found that review very useful, guys. I'm super happy with this. Take a look at the Jin e-bikes website with the link in the description. Check out the detailed specifications of this bike and all of the other bikes. Their website is very clearly laid out. The purchase process is so simple and it's very easy to follow. They even showcase why this is better than some of the competitors out there, which is very useful information for you guys to know. And if you guys are on the market for a new e-bike, definitely check out the Jin X. And even better, I've got a 50 pound discount code for you guys. So make sure to check out that coupon code in my description box to save even more money on something that's already so affordable. They also provide 28 days money back guarantee in case you change your mind. And if you do go ahead and buy this bike, you have five years warranty as well. What more can you ask for? New reviews out every week. I review tech gadgets. I review a lot of things, including bikes like this. 
And if you guys do have any comments or if you want to provide any feedback, then drop a comment down below as well. Make sure to like this video and I'll catch you guys at the next time. Take care.